combining some of the things we've seen over this time. Um, so we have um, this idea of interactivity. We have this idea of feedback and sort of creating these more organic things. We have this idea of layers and blending. And so I'm just going to um, start from scratch and do something combining all of those things together. Um, I haven't planned out exactly what I'm going to do, so we'll sort of see what happens. Um, but um, I encourage you, if you want to make something for yourself, to try this sort of see what happens approach um, and just try changing things. Um, and, and I think that's one of the things I really like about working with Hydra is um, just this idea that there's no sort of right way of doing things or specific way that you're supposed to make things with it. It's more about trying things out and seeing what you like and um, thinking of images that you might want to combine with each other. Um, so I'm going to clear this sketch. Oh, and if you want to get rid of the audio thing, you can do hide there. Um, the audio bars at the bottom. Um, so let's see, I'm going to start with um, the camera and I'm going to show the camera. Um, and I am going to, I want to add some color here. So I'm going to um, uh, multiply this with an oscillator. Uh, and again, the last parameter of the oscillator is sort of how much color. So, um, and um, now I got this sort of like dark and ominous thing here. Um, um, let's try it. So another thing I have not shown yet also is there's a command called Luma, which um, it's similar to something called Luma keying that happens a lot in um, video processing. And what that does is it cuts out just the light parts of an image. So if I do this, um, it shows just the lighter parts of the image. So, um, and um, yeah, it basically converts the brightness into opacity. Um, and so one thing you can do with, um, Luma is you can start to layer different things on top of each other. So um, here I have this one, this background image. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually use this command layer. And I'm going to add another camera on top. And I'm going to have it be repeated. Um, and I'm going to put the Luma key on that. Let's see what happens here. Um, and so now I have this like kind of weird stencil thing of what's behind and in front. Maybe I'll just keep the oscillator behind actually. Let's see. Okay. So here um, we have an oscillator. Um, and I want to add color to the top as well, add different colors. So we could do diff with another oscillator um, and some different colors. Um, maybe that's moving a little fast. I'll slow it down a little bit here. Um, maybe make go the other direction. Um, now I have a sort of maybe like pop art-ish thing myself repeated. Um, um, yeah, and if you want, if you want to just take out the 
dark parts of an image, you could invert the image before you apply a luma and then apply a luma again. So like this, let's see. So now um, I'm just taking out the dark parts of the image. Um, Um, so now I have this repetition of myself. I'm starting to like it a little bit, still kind of playing around, I think. Um, but maybe I could um, combine this with um, uh, some feedback. Um, and so uh, one thing I could do is have the source of this layer be the output of the layer, like we looked at in the feedback section. So let's say um, source. Um, so now I start to have this like trail thing. Maybe I'll actually take away the repeat from this. So now I have this sort of trail thing going on. Um, and again, if I like invert back then now. So here I have this trail. Um, and I could apply some feedback. Um, so one thing I could do here is um, we saw, for example, the scale before. So now I'm applying some feedback here. I'm starting to have this kind of wild pattern happening behind me. Um, uh, I could also add a scroll. And let's see this happen. Maybe instead of multiplying, I want to add actually here. Oh. Maybe that's too much. <laughs> we could blend. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. A lot of things started happening, I think. Let me go back to what I had before. Okay, there we go. Um, And maybe I want to slow down this background a little bit. Maybe I'll take out this scaling. So now um, I have this background. And maybe I could add some interactivity to this. So um, maybe what I will do is I will make um, this background modulate according to how much sound there is. So um, remember if I do modulate, it starts to make the background move. So each pixel is going to move based on the color of it, that pixel. So, oh, oh wow. Ah, I need to put, um, okay, so, that was a mistake, I guess. With modulate, you always need to use um, a texture as the input. So because it's combining two textures together, uh, there has to be a texture and not, um, not a number within modulate. So now I've added modulate and it's created this sort of effects. If I make this effect higher, it does more glitchy or less glitchy. Um, and so what I can do now is I could uh, um, use the 
sound to change how much modulation is happening. So what I'm gonna to try to do is use the sound to change uh, how much the background changes. Um, first I'll format the code a little bit with control shift F. I know this is a lot and I guess the good thing about a video is that you can sort of pause and go back through um, or skip ahead or just copy the code or whatever, but I, um, I'm trying to go through a few different techniques that uh, combine all of these things together. So again, what we have here is we have a feedback loop where the output of this cycle is the input. Then I'm scrolling in a little, maybe I'll try taking out the scroll for a little so we just see. So I'm, I'm scrolling it. Um, and then I have this modulate thing, which is basically um, the color, the, each pixel is moving according to um, how dark or light it is. Um, and then I, on top of that, I'm adding a layer, which is the camera um, that right now is just being repeated once. Um, it's um, being inverted then having a luma key applied and then being inverted again. So just if I if I took out these two inverted pieces, what would happen is it would take just the lighter parts of the um, image and now it's taking the darker parts of the image. So basically it is um, converting the the brightness into opacity. Um, and so that's one way to do something like that ends up being similar to a green screen effect, but but kind of different. Um, then I'm here I'm multiplying this oscillator, but I could take that out for a bit. So um, yeah, maybe that was um, what I could also do is apply a color here. So I could do color. Um, let's see. Um, I want to do like some red. Um, so here now I have this different color. Um, so again, if I make this modulate value higher, it's going to have more of a glitchy effect. If I make it negative, it goes the other way. And so now what I could do is um, make the, uh, the modulate amount go with the sound. And so, um, so what I'm going to do, um, this is the, again, it's a.fft to make something go with the sound. And so there we go. Well, it's kind of just disappearing because I think it's modulating it so much whenever I say something. So um, I'm going to um, multiply by, let's try 0 0.01 and see what happens. So now it's less, which is nice. Um, and so what we could do is have this scroll X, we could have it go with a different sound parameter as well. So um, I'll use this one, I'll use higher frequencies. So um, if you just as a reminder, in order to see the, um, the audio, we press, we can do A dot show. So now this shows the audio levels in the corner. Um, so now I can have the higher frequencies affect the scroll, let's see, and I'm not sure if it's doing anything right now. Oh, there we go. And maybe, uh, so, well that's pretty nice. Um, I could, so I had set the cutoff to be pretty high last time in the example. So maybe I will set the cutoff a little bit lower so it will be a little more sensitive. So again, this is the cutoff of 
um, which audio affects what's happening. So I will set it here to be maybe four. Um, so yeah, so there's a little lower. And I kind of like this colors that are happening here. Um, I'll get rid of the code just to see what's happening. Um, I kind of like these colors and they're being modulated by sound, which is, which is nice. Um, and so let's see, one thing we could do is have the colors change a little bit um, each time it's updated. So there's a command called hue that just slightly changes the hue of what we see. So we'll see what that does. So oop, it gets a little rainbow. Uh, oh, wow. Um, we could maybe uh, turn down the hue a little bit so it's maybe slightly less rainbow. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Um, and so uh, what you can do is, if you have something you like, there's of course the upload way of sharing, but another thing you could do is um, if you just type control shift enter or use the run button, actually the URL, um, the URL at the top of the screen becomes a link that you can share. So um, it's off the screen right now, but I'm just copying the URL, the text that's in the address bar, and then I can um, directly share that. Um, and so if, if you're, it, it takes a while to load sometimes, but if you're following along, I would encourage you to share something in the forum or in the Facebook group if you're interested. Um, and um, I think this, concludes the video series or tutorial. Um, but I'm gonna save this, this sketch, I'm gonna save the code um, and share it along with the video so that if you want, you can um, just directly open the link and start editing this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much.